Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So, today uh, we will start a new chapter. In fact, this is uh, chapter number 13 of the book we are following. So, the book what we are following, we are skipping three chapters, chapter 10, chapter 11 and chapter 12. If you can remember that application of say, application of the concepts of consumer surplus and producer, producer surplus and total social surplus and social welfare, all those their application we have discussed in chapter 9 in the context of international trade. Okay. And now, we are going to chapter 13. So, chapter 10, 11 and 12 we are skipping. Chapter 13, it is basically the uh, concepts of uh, production, cost. So, it is it is uh, we are now starting discussion exclusively of uh, a producer okay, or, a, or a farm. We told that production activities. Uh, economic agent who are or unit who are responsible for production activity that we call farm right F I R M farm right. So, we are going to discuss uh, what will be the optimum strategy or, or max, uh, maximizing something maximizing strategy of a farmer of a producer right. Obviously, when a farm is operating okay, its target is what? its target is to engage itself into some production activity right. So, to do that it has to hire certain factors of production, it has to pay those factors of production okay, to, to utilize their services okay. and using those factors of production services and combining them together it is producing some goods or services right. So, that goods and service whatever it is producing that it will sell in the market right and after selling that it will get some sales revenue right. So, uh, farm or the organizer of a farm or entrepreneur of a farm right, he is or her who is the entrepreneur, he is or her target is to get profit right because entrepreneur's remuneration is profit we told right. Ha, what is that profit? Profit is basically profit that is basically whatever the revenue minus cost right. So, revenue is basically whatever the farm is producing that goods or that service whatever it is producing that once it it is sold in the market it is collecting some sales revenue right after selling that product it is earning some money. So, that is called sell, sell, uh, sell revenue sales revenue right sales revenue sales revenue. Okay. And when it is hiring certain factors of production to, in, to make them engaged or make them combine into production activity to be able to uh, produce some goods or service right, it has to pay its factors of production. So, total payment of those factors of production are called cost that is basically production cost or cost of production right. So, this difference whatever revenue he is getting. Uh, minus whatever cost he has to incur okay, that is called profit right. So, definitely I am the entrepreneur, I am running this business, what will be my target? Definitely my target is to uh, make this profit as much as possible. So, maximize profit is the uh, optimum uh, decision making kind of thing of, a, of an entrepreneur or of an organization. Or of a farm right, it, it will always try to maximize its profit right. But in maximizing that what is its choice variable? Choice variables are basically how much factors of production it will hire say suppose land, labor cap or capital all these factors of production how much of unit of each of them it will hire okay. and that how much of unit of each of them it will hire that depends on what? That depends on how much output it is going to uh, or it is deciding to produce. Suppose I am deciding to produce say 10 units of output right. So, whatever land labor or capital I have to hire, if I want to pro produce 20 units of output, definitely I have to hire each of those factors of production may be little bit more right. 
So, that is the thing. So, uh, when farm is operating, uh, it has to incur certain cost. So, we will first discuss today uh, different concepts of costs uh, and uh, different uh, the, the combining the higher factors of production. Okay, once it is converting those factors of production into the output or produced good or produced service, right? So that technological know-how, uh, knowledge level, using which that entrepreneur or organization is converting inputs into outputs, that uh, knowledge level is called in economics called technology. Okay, technology. So, we will discuss uh, that technology, how we can capture that by different diagrams associated to that different kinds of concepts we will discuss. So, sometimes back if you can remember that short run and long run, short run vis a vis long run. So, if you can remember we told when we introduced or when we first come across these two concepts short run and long run we told that we will specifically mention the definition of short run and long run sometimes later that is the, that time is right now. Okay. We came to that, that discussion now, okay. we will define here what is short run and what is long run, but earlier so far whatever we have introduced short run is relatively shorter span of time, long run is relatively longer span of time. Right? So, short run let me first introduce what is short run and long, long run, short run is that span of time within which a producer have or whatever production uh, technology that producer is using, he has at least one fixed factor. So, certain factors of production are there which are fixed in nature and certain factors of production are there which are variable in nature. So, for instance, say suppose this room where we are sitting, right? this room I want to uh, hire. Okay. And what I will do? After hiring this room, I, I want to make a stitching factory inside this room. Okay. So, perhaps I will hire 10 stitching machines with 10, uh, 10 say experienced uh, persons who know how to stitch cloths. Right? So, 10 stitching machine and 10 that kind of experienced labor force I will hire and I will uh, accommodate those 10 stitching machine inside this room. Suppose that is my target. right? Now, you, you, you can understand that say maybe next one year or two years so long I am hiring this room, right? that is basically this size of this room is fixed factor to me. So, I have a contract maybe for one year with the, uh, with the owner of this room. Okay? So, next one year I will use this. So, you can understand the by virtue of the fact that the size of this room, this room size, this is my workshop size, right? because I, 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 I am planning to establish my workshop inside this room. So, so long I cannot hire another size of room or I cannot increase my this workshop size, that time is called short run. And within that what is my fixed factor? Of course, my workshop size is the fixed factor. What is my variable factor then within that first one year? Definitely number of stitching machine, number of people I hire. So, inside this room I can try to hire 10 stitching machine, maybe 12 stitching machine, maybe 15 stitching machine. Of course, there will be some upper limit, maybe not more than 20 stitching machines is accommodable within this room. right? So, given this room size, 0 to 20, any number of stitching machine I can hire and I can uh, employ into my production activity. right? So, you can easily understand if I hire say 10 stitching machine, although I can accommodate up to 20 stitching machine inside this room given this room size. right? So, I am I am hiring, I, I decided to hire say 10 stitching machine, definitely 10 that kind of labor force. So, I am hiring. So, here stitching machine and labor force these are variable input, because I can employ none of them, no stitching machine, no uh, person, one stitching machine, one person, two stitching machine, two person, uh, two stitching machine, two person. So, we are making one is to one kind of ratio, because each person will, will be, uh, will be uh, working using one stitching machine in that way. right? 
So, from this given example you can easily understand that at least two variable factors we are getting here number of stitching machine and number of person we are we are hiring, but the size of this room or this workshop factory size ok this is a fixed factor and we can I can increase my factory size or increase lower my uh, factory size only in the next one year or after the one year why because I hired this room uh, from the from the owner of this room for one year that is my uh, rent contract ok with the owner. Right. So, you can understand that certain factors of productions are there in real life which are fixed in nature, certain factors of production are there which are variable in nature. So, the factors of production which are fixed in nature we used to term that as fixed factor, fixed factor ok and exactly the same way other factors are called variable factor. Okay. So, you can understand say look at here uh, depending on the say I am stitching machine I am hiring right and I am I am employing stitch, uh, stitching machine with employer or uh, with, with certain labor force right. So, to do what perhaps I will purchase cloth okay, and using this uh, uh, in my workshop I will convert this cloth into different shirts. Okay. So, depending on how much demand for my shirt is there in the market right, I will accordingly hire that stitching machine and labor. If today say demand is very less right, perhaps I will hire only two labor and two stitching machine right. Tomorrow it demand is little bit more, perhaps I will try to hire three stitching machine and three labor force. Okay. In that way, that way I can change this depending on what is the market situation right. Okay. But if say suppose demand is very high ok, I, I, I am willing to uh, say hire maybe 40 stitching machines and 40 labor force, but within that one year it is not possible because within one year I, I, I hired this room. Perhaps after one year I will go to this uh, owner of this room again and tell can you give your next room also I want to I want to uh, rent both the rooms not this. So, here that one year that contract that is called so any time point 0 to 1 year within that it is called short run that is the time point within which at least one factor is fixed ok. But after one year so more than one year it is variable factor ok that is called long run because after one year if it is two years even the size of the factor is not fixed after one year I can I can hire another room tomorrow say suppose today I am hiring say 10 labor force and 10 stitching machine ok. Uh, but if suddenly say after 2 months I am observing that no no demand for my shirt what I am producing no it is gone uh, drastically gone down right what I will do. I will perhaps try to reduce my hiring of number of labor and number of uh, stitching machine right, but I cannot immediately move from this room to another sm smaller room right. Even if I go right in any case I have to pay the rent for uh, monthly rent for this room from whom I, I hire it right. So, does not matter whether I am not producing at all or producing less amount of uh, shirt or producing more amount of shirt does not matter the cost for or rent cost for this particular room right that is fixed. Okay. So, that is why this kind of factor is called fixed factor. So, what are the fixed factor? Factors which are fixed in nature and we have to utilize them in fixed in quantity in the short run, short run shorter relatively shorter period of time within which at least one factor is fixed and not all the factors are variable. What is the long run? The long run all the factors of productions are variable including my factory size the kind of example we have given. Right. So, let me clarify one thing. So, short run and long run these two concepts now you can understand that they have a specific definition okay, in economics, but this long run concept of long run it is not one year or two year like that. That is also uh, that changes that time span which we will term as long run that depends on what kind of particular production activity we are talking about the kind of we have uh, we gave an example about this hiring of this room as my workshop ok and hiring the stitching machine and labor force right. Uh, given that kind of example this is one year because I am I am hiring this room for one year that is why short run is one year. 
if say suppose say I am I am I am engaged into steel production right perhaps 3 years is the short run because uh, another plant con I am I have a plant and within that plant I am producing some st steel. If tomorrow demand for steel is increasing a uh, huge right perhaps I need at least 3 years to establish or uh, to build up another plant right. So, in that case any time point 3 years or less than that it is short run ok 3 years and more than that or more than 3 years it is the long run ok. So, what is the span of time which will be termed as long run vis a vis short run that depends on what kind of production activity we are engaged with right. So, that is the thing. So, uh, some fixed factor some variable factor right and whatever the cost we have to incur hiring fixed factor that is called fixed cost fixed cost and variable factors hiring variable factors whatever cost we will incur that is called variable cost variable cost ok. Ok, let me clarify another factor that is called quasi fixed factor quasi fixed factor ok. What is quasi fixed quasi means quasi in a dictionary meaning as if as if ok. So, certain factors are there uh, who has uh, apparently look like they are, they are fixed factor ok, but they are uh, variable also they can be variable also. Let me give an example that will be very helpful for you to understand what, what which factors are called quasi fixed factor ok. Quasi fixed factors are basically so, so when we are discussing fixed factor and variable factors you understand that the fixed cost or cost for the fixed factor is always something is there irrespective of how much production I am uh, producing right. Even if I do not produce anything I have to incur that cost in the short run right and, and, and when I am starting. So, I am not producing anything still I have to hire this room because I am planning to maybe today I hire maybe I am planning to establish or hire those um, stitching machine and lever ports maybe tomorrow ok or maybe after one month because I need time also no who are the people around ok who, who, where that stitching machine is available ok like that I have to I, I need those information right. So, those information suppose it needs one month ok. So, even if I am going to produce my production activity will be uh, start will start after one month, but this month I have to pay the rent to the owner of this room no because I already hired right. So, even when I am not producing anything I have to pay for fixed cost right. So, fixed factor so cost for the fixed factor which is called fixed cost that I have to incur in any case irrespective of whether I am producing zero amount of output or some positive amount of output. But quasi fixed factor it is uh, the cost I have to incur for that factor is 0 so long I am not producing anything. As soon as I am I start production of 1 unit, 2 unit, 3 units does not matter. So, 0 unit of so production production quantity so long 0 unit fixed that cost is also 0 cost is 0 production 1 unit plus some positive unit of production whatever cost I will incur I have to incur some positive cost here some positive cost I have to incur here and that amount of cost will not vary at all. So, 1 unit of output whatever I am producing whatever cost I am incurring 2 units of output same cost 5 units of output same cost ok. So, long I am using this factory size ok same amount of cost look fixed cost the same factory size right I am using 0 amount of output I am producing 0 amount of output 2 units of output 5 units of output 10 units of output all are same some positive fixed cost some positive cost is there that, that that cost is basically rent I am paying for this house or for this room to the owner of this room right. But quasi fixed cost it remains fixed but it has two group. So, long output is 0 this cost is 0 it is not positive at all 
and so long output is positive irrespective of the quantity of output 1 unit, 5 unit, 10 unit whatever it is that is same amount of cost. Okay. But when you are not producing anything you, you need not incur any cost. So, let me give an example what kind of cost is can be referred as quasi fixed. So, suppose this room right say there is a big lamp uh, in the middle of this room is there there is a big lamp. Okay, and that one lamp is enough to light in the entire room. Okay. So, look at here I hired this room to establish my stitching factory inside this right. So, so long I am not hiring any stitching machine or any lever or I so long they are not engaged into any production activity I need not run that or burn that light right. So, so long I am not starting any kind of production activity although I already hired this room right. So, electricity cost for that lamp I have to incur 0 because I need not switch on that light. But as soon as I started say hiring one machine and one labor force start some production same lamp I have to uh, switch on two labor force and two stitching machine same one lamp. 5 labor force until up to 20 labor force because we, to, we told that maximum 20 numbers of stitching machine and 20 labor force we can accommodate inside this room right. So, look at this electricity cost behind that lamp ok. So, long my output is 0 or production is 0 there is no electricity cost for that lamp. As soon as I started production some cost I have to incur for that lamp. Okay. And, and that does not depend on how much cost I am incurring that does not depend on how much production I am producing 1 unit, 5 units, 10 units like that. So, this quasi fixed factor looks like as if it is a fixed factor, but when you are not producing anything you need not incur any cost for that. Okay. So, that is the thing. So, what we have discussed now let me summarize. So, what is the definition of short run and long run? fixed factor and variable factor and their respective cost fixed co are termed as fixed cost and variable cost in that context we told what is quasi fixed cost also. So, uh, when we are discussing this cost of production right. So, we have to show two different concepts of costs are there one is called explicit cost, explicit cost and implicit cost. What is explicit cost? So, cost for hiring of some factors of production where the uh, money money which is going from your pocket physical amount of money is going from your pocket to pay up that factor ok. That kind of cost is called explicit cost. What is implicit cost? Certain costs are involved ok as if uh, there is no you are not incurring any cost that kind of impression you will get, but that cost is there. Say let me give an example. Say suppose after your graduation right you go you, you, you got graduated right. So, after that you got a an, an, an job offer ok. Say say rupees 50,000 rupees per month that is your salary. You decided not to do that job rather you will uh, engage into some startup business you want to you want to be an uh, entrepreneur ok and you are you are starting a business right. So, when you are starting a business new business right you have to perhaps hire some factors of production right some labor some employees ok some may be um, other kinds of factors depending on what kind of business you are going to start right. So, look at here. So, whatever employees you are hiring say suppose two computers you have to hire. So, whatever cost you are paying to that employees two computer you are hiring whatever cost you are paying ok. Then you hired a room this kind of room right. So, that cost rent for that room all these things if you sum up that is your explicit cost ok. But is it your total cost? definitely no your total cost should include some implicit cost also say rupees 50,000 per month rupees say 50 k per month ok. Why look if you do not so this implicit cost is coming in the sense of opportunity cost 
Okay. Why? Because if you do not engage into this uh, startup new business, right? you could earn 50,000 rupees. In fact, that kind of job offer were there for you, but you declined that. So, you have to incur or you have to uh, say suppose this three hiring for these three factors total your cost per month say 70 k rupees 70 k per month okay that much uh, of cost you are incurring so this is called explicit cost because for those factors you are paying to them but although you are not paying anything to yourself but if you could earn 50000 rupees per month right so your total cost that is called economic cost economic cost should be equals to that is your total cost of this business should be rupees 70,000 plus rupees 50,000 this together per month. Because when you start your business right you have to lose the opportunity of this much of earning. So, in that opportunity cost sense, you have to incur, uh, you have to include that. So, 1 lakh 20,000 rupees, 120k per month, uh, that is your actually cost for your business. Okay. Uh, let me give you an another example. Suppose you are going to start a business now. So, you, you have to, uh, you have to, need, uh, you need some uh, capital monetary capital right. So, suppose 3, 3 lakh rupee of monetary capital you need to start that business. Okay. So, that 3 lakh rupee what, what you can do? You can take that loan from the bank and you have to pay some rate of interest say 10 percent rate of interest suppose. Okay. So, definitely this 3 lakh rupee if you take from the bank as loan. So, uh, so uh, 10 percent so per month not per month per year you have to pay 30 k of rupees as interest 10 percent rate of interest right. So, per year you have to pay okay, 30,000 okay, as interest on that loan whatever you have taken from the bank. Now, suppose instead of that 3 lakh rupee you need to start your business you take loan 2 lakh rupee from the bank and 1 lakh rupee you had in your pocket that also you, uh, you, you invested into your business. So, 3 lakh rupee required you hire 2 lakh rupee or you take loan from bank 2 lakh rupee. Okay. So, as a result you are paying to bank rupees 20 k per year as interest. So, that is your total interest income? No, because your total interest income should be rupees 30 k because uh, 1 lakh rupee what you are investing into your own business from your own pack pocket right. If you do not start business that 1 lakh rupee what you could do? As a rational person you, you will not keep that idle in your room no, or in your pocket right. Perhaps you could save that into a bank account where you can incur some rate of interest right. So, that is why you have to uh, add that additional 10,000 rupees here if you ask the question that 10,000 rupees coming from where, if I could take that 1 lakh rupee not from me, okay, my own capital rather if I could hire that or I could take loan that from the bank, how much I have to incur 10,000 rupees. So, your interest in interest cost on your that 3 lakh rupee right is basically 30,000 rupees per year out of that 20,000 rupees is explicitly you are counting and 10,000 rupees are as implicit cost. Okay. If you could take that loan from the bank how much you can incur. So, so your economic cost should be combination of when you as an entrepreneur you are combining you no know, uh, total cost, total revenue, then revenue minus cost that is your profit that is called economic profit. So, let me let me summarize. So, uh, economic profit economic profit that is basically sales revenue to in any case is there sales revenue minus explicit cost whatever you are incurring also minus implicit cost as well implicit cost as well. 
ok. So, we can tell economic profit is basically sales revenue minus economic cost ok. And if we simply make this sales revenue minus explicit cost, this thing sometimes it is called accounting profit accounting profit ok. So, economic profit is basically accounting profit minus implicit cost. So, when we are we are talking about the cost of production of a farm of a producer or of an of an entrepreneur right you have to consider only economic cost ok. And when we are talking about profit of that producer or that entrepreneur that is also economic profit not in accounting profit that sense right, but you you know what is accounting profit ok. So, the, the sales revenue minus explicit cost that is called account, accounting profit. So, accounting profit is basically this red colored bracketed thing is accounting profit ok. So, that is the thing. So, different concepts. So, so definitely you, you, you can understand that economic profit will be. So, economic profit profit will be less than or equals to accounting profit. So, when it will be equal when there is no implicit cost all the costs of your production or whatever cost you are incurring in your production activity all are explicit in nature right. So, you understand what is implicit cost what is explicit cost and so on. So, let us stop here now we will discuss the production technology or different cost alternative concepts of uh, cost.